Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can convert your JSONs to Excel files. So whether that be a .json file that you need to convert, or whether you're wanting to convert JSONs that are being stored within a Power Automate in a variable. Either way, we can start to convert these to Excel using Encodian's Flower. So let's take a look at the solution. So for the solution today, let's say I'm an HR manager and I receive a monthly email containing data about employees' performances for the past month. So this data is going to come to me as a JSON email attachment. So we're not going to focus on how this JSON has actually been produced for the demo. We can just assume that it's collected data across different systems. But the main thing is that it's being sent across to me in a monthly repeated email. So once I receive this email, it's going to trigger Power Automate in the back end which is then going to take this JSON email attachment, convert it to an Excel file and save it into this SharePoint folder for me. So this is my employee performance SharePoint folder. So we can see that we've got a folder for each of the years and I need this document to be saved back into this 2024 folder. So let's have a look at the Power Automate that's gonna drive all this in the back end. So this is my Power Automate. This is an automated cloud flow with the trigger when a new email arrives. So there's a few different input conditions that I'm using for this Power Automate trigger. Attachments need to be included. The trigger should only run for emails that contain attachments because I know that my email is going to contain a .json file. And the subject filter has to contain employee performance data. Again, because this is a repeating email, I know that this is going to be the subject line of that email. So once the flow has been triggered, the next thing is to loop round each attachment. Even though there's actually only going to be one file attached to this email, we still need to loop round each of the attachments because when you use Outlook with Power Automate, it picks up lots of things that you probably wouldn't expect to be attachments as attachments. So for example, if an email signature is sent at the bottom of an email and it contains an image, this will class as an attachment which obviously if we then put into our flower action to convert a JSON to Excel, that action will fail. So we need to make sure this doesn't happen. So once we've started our loop, the first thing we need to do is to check that that attachment is not an inline attachment. So inline attachments will be those signature images or those images in an email body, which Power Automate is picking up as an email attachment. However, the .json file that's just actually been attached to the email, that is not in line. That is not in the email body. So the outputs to this is going to be false. So we can just check that the attachment is in line. Dynamic content piece is equal to false to make sure that it is actually that file that we need to get and not just images that may have arised in the email body. So the first step then that we need to do to our actual attached file is use our flower convert JSON to Excel action. So the output file name that I'm going to give the file is employee performance with today's month dash today's year. And you need to make sure that the file extension is given in this output file name. And there's actually two ways that you can input your JSON data into this action. So you can use file content like I'm using here. And file content is the input you need to use if you have a .json file, which we do for this demo. The second way is using the JSON data input. So you may have a Power Automate, which is collecting data and building up a JSON file, which you then want to convert to Excel. So because your JSON data, it's not in a .json file, it's maybe just saved in an array variable in Power Automate. You can just go ahead and put that array variable as the input here to the JSON data input. So you don't need to use both of them as one or the other, depending on where your JSON is for your automation. Because this action is outputting a file, we have a few different inputs to do with formatting and styling of the document here. So we can state where we want the data to start to be added into our Excel file. We can decide what the worksheet name is going to be. We can say whether we want to convert numeric values and date values. 
if this is set to no, these will just be inputted as strings. But if you're looking to create charts and reports off of your new Excel data, it will be best to convert these so they're already ready to go when the file is made. We can say whether we want to ignore null values. And we've also got some styling as well for the header row, if you choose to have a header row. So we can make the text bold, change the color and wrap the text. So once we've converted the file, the next step is to actually save this into the right SharePoint folder. So I'm not going to want to have to come into the flow at the start of each year to change what folder path these documents are going to be saved to. So we can have this running dynamically by composing the folder path in a compose action. So this is what I'm just doing here. And I'm using the UTC now to grab the current year so that the folder path will always correspond to the year that this document is being created in. So once we've got the folder path, we can then create the file in SharePoint to the same site using that dynamic folder path. And the file name and the file content are the outputs of our convert JSON to Excel action. So that's the flow. So because this is a demo, I'm not actually going to have those repeated monthly emails. So I'm just going to go ahead and manually send myself that email across now to get this flow triggered. So I'm now in my Outlook and I can see I've just had that email come in. We can see the subject line is employee performance data. We can see there is that email signature, which would have caused a problem. We built in logic to avoid that. And we can also see that I've got this employee performance JSON. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up just to show you what a JSON file actually looks like. So this is the JSON file that is now going to be converted into an Excel file. So we've got the keys here, employee ID, name, department, performance score, feedback, review period, and manager. Let's go ahead and see how the Power Automate is doing. So I've gone back to SharePoint. And we now have this document that's been uploaded here, which means that the Power Automate has run. So I'm going to open this up and this is what the output Excel file document looks like. So we can see the styling for the header row has pulled through and I changed my font to red just to make it stand out. We can see we have the exact same columns that we had as our JSON keys with all the data as well being added incorrectly. And we've even got our worksheet name being called data, which is what I asked it to be called in the action. So having that JSON, if I just load it back up. So having that data in this JSON format, which isn't the friendliest to read and, you know, isn't going to be the quickest to actually go through and do reports and analysis of, converted to this Excel file, which is a lot more readable. And because it's an Excel, you can easily go ahead now and make charts, make reports, and this is even in a format to send across to whoever needs to see these performance stats. So hopefully this video today has shown you how you can really easily start to convert your JSON data into an Excel file in just one easy step using Encodian Flower. Once you've got your Excel file, it makes it a lot easier to read the data, analyze the data, and report off the data as necessary. If you have any questions, about anything you've seen today, please leave me a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodian. And as always, happy automating.